Well, good morning. Welcome to Some Good Seeds. Queen Hathaway here with you. And uh, the good seed that I want to plant today in our hearts, in my own heart especially, but also for all of us, is found in our reading today from uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, 5 and 6, and then uh, 2 Thessalonians chapters 1, 2, and 3. And I, I want to read a little bit uh, longer passage so we get all of this in context. And it just is, it's just amazing to me. Uh, chapter 1 of 2 Thessalonians, verses 3 through 8. Powerful stuff, and I'll just read and, and add a few comments. And hopefully this this seed will be planted in, in, in my own heart even more and grow more strong, uh, more strong, get stronger as we walk each day with the Lord. So here's what it says. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly. Uh, boy, there's a powerful uh, statement to us about our own faith. And is it growing exceedingly? We are bound to give thanks to you for your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other. There's a tremendous challenge to us, isn't there? Uh, to love all the brethren. That's just so important because Jesus said what? They will know that people would know you are my disciples by your love for one another. So their love was abounding toward each other so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. There is a challenge to us to be the people of God who are walking in faith and patience in everything that goes on because of persecution that I believe is coming uh, more than we have experienced to this point. Not only persecutions, and but the tribulations that they were enduring. That speaks to the afflictions, the difficulties, the trials of life that we are going through. And Paul was boasting about those people because they were patiently enduring persecution and tribulation. Let's move on. Which, he says, those that action, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. What was the reason for that difficulty? Well, they were standing up for the Lord. Their testimony was one of preaching the gospel and enduring the things that were going on. And I I firmly believe that in these times that we are living in, we have that uh, potential thing coming down upon us. So what do we do in that? We patiently endure uh, because we know that there is an end to all of this things, these things. And so here's what he goes on to say in verse 6. Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you, and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Think about that. Uh, there is a rest. We experience that rest in the sense of, of Hebrews chapter 4 where Paul talks about that rest. And what is that rest? It's a, a ceasing from our own works to try to be righteous before God. We have given ourselves over to the Lord. Uh, and so we, we experience that rest from the effort the, of self-effort to try to be uh, righteous before God. So, but this rest that Paul is referring to here is not that same thing. It's the rest when we go to be with the Lord, uh, when he is revealed from heaven uh, to give you who are troubled. And there will be trouble, no doubt about that. But when there is a rest that is coming uh, where we are going to get new bodies. Uh, Paul tells us that here and later in this in this book and also in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We experience that chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians. We know that those things are coming. So we give praise to the Lord because we have a hope beyond this life. Praise God for that. So he, Jesus, when Jesus is revealed, verse 7, from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Forever means forever. And that is a sobering, uh, staggering thought that he has given to us here, that there is coming a day when God's patience will have run its course and we will, uh, well, those who don't know the Lord rather, will experience the wrath of God. Not a great thing. And we need to warn people to flee from that rest from that wrath that is coming. So the reality is that Jesus has done the work for us. He paid our penalty, paid our fine, and there is a rest, a time coming when we will go to be with the Lord forever. That is the hope that we have. 
So uh, patiently endure, as Paul wrote to the Thessalonians in this second letter, endure what's going on. Keep your eyes fixed on the prize. Keep looking up, anticipating the coming of the Lord, knowing that this stuff that we're going through right now, whatever trial, tribulation, whatever difficulty it is that you're going through right now, there's an end to it, my friends. Dear ones, there is coming a day when we are going to be with the Lord. Keep your eyes fixed on that. Help us, Lord Jesus, I pray, to keep our eyes fixed upon you and the hope that we have of being with you for all eternity and to patiently endure as we await your coming. I pray in Christ's name. Amen. May the Lord richly bless you today as you keep your eyes focused on the skies, for he is coming soon.